Hey everyone, Matt Martin here, Outdoor Designs. Uh, I was just going to talk a little bit. Uh, I'm leaving the big property I just sprayed. And, uh, you know, I've been on it since 8 o'clock this morning. It's about 45 minutes outside of town. Uh, so it's a little bit of a trek to get to. But it's, you know, 11.30 now. So I spent three and a half hours on the property. And, of course, you know, I, I'm, I'm being paid well for that particular property. So it's not the time issue. But, you know, it's 90 degrees. Uh, it's 11.30. You've been on the same property three and a half hours. It's summertime. You know, it's hard for me. I guess really what I wanted to focus on was that, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard this time of year to remain focused on, on what you're doing and why you're doing it. Uh, it's fun in the spring and the fall when there's the, the big sales hustle and everybody wants to come out and talk to you and ask questions and, uh, you know, you really feel like an expert and, you know, you want to help people as much as you can. Uh, but this time of year, if you're calling your regular customers, like for instance, right now, running grub controls, you call customer, I've got your grub control on the schedule, and they're like, ah, I don't know if I need it. Do I need it? Like, well, you had a history of grubs in the yard, so yes, I would say you need it. Yeah, but I don't want to crank out the money. And then, so you finally get them talked into it, and the reason why you're doing it, and then you get out there to do it, and it's hot, and it's dry, and you're tired, and it's tough to stay motivated. So some of the things I like to do to keep my head on my shoulders, uh, number one, podcast. I love listening to podcasts. I listen to everything from you know terrestrial radio. I love a show out of Austin, Texas, The Dudley and Bob Show. Um, I listen to a trade-specific podcasts. Uh, the Landscape Business Pro, Stanley Genetic, that is one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, he's got a lot of good insights, and he does a really good job of getting interesting people that may not be specifically in the green industry, but brings them in to bring up topics and then correlates with how it does apply to the green industry. And uh, I really, really, really enjoy... Uh, that practice that, that he started and listening to things like that, listening to the struggles that other business owners go through, you know, that he goes through, or uh, Keith Calfass on YouTube, uh, it, it, it's relieving to hear that other people go through uh, the same issues that, that you do, that I do. Um, who's, who's another one? Uh, uh, Geek to Freak Lawn Care. Uh, I love Greg, too. In fact, I, I'll never forget the first time I watched this video. I said, this is so crazy that this guy knows exactly what is going on and he's documenting the whole thing. And uh, to me, that was that was fantastic. Uh, I know those guys all talk about Johnny Moe and uh, Top Notch Lawns, too. I've never specifically watched anything from them. I've seen a couple videos. I saw Johnny Moe talking about how uh, how he sells new lawns, and it was with uh, the way he beautifully stripes stuff when he mows it. And I agree, striping lawns will sell you more mowing accounts if that's what you're after. Um, so, I, you know, lots of YouTube videos, uh, lots of podcasts. Uh, I take care of our website as well, lawncarenonks.com. Um, and so I try and listen to podcasts about search engine optimization. Uh, generating organic traffic to the website is huge. Inbound marketing is huge. It's difficult, but it's something in today's time that has to happen. You can sink thousands of dollars into uh, marketing, advertising, direct mailing. That's that's one thing I'm, I'm looking at for the fall, maybe even in the, the spring of next year, is doing uh, direct mail. It's very expensive. You're looking at 30 cents a piece, but how many houses do you have to get in front of before you get a decent return? So you want to mail 5,000 pieces? Well, you're looking at, you know, 1,500 bucks to mail that. That's stressful. How do you handle it? Well, you know, maybe focus on other areas that don't cost so much. 
the inbound marketing. You can always do Google pay-per-click, that can get expensive too. Uh, so you really have to understand what kind of return on investment you want. And so listening to these business podcasts, give me ideas, uh, keep my mind sharp, keep me learning. Um, there's a lawn and landscape pod, uh, podcast too. I, I, I just try and stay up to date with all the information that's in in the industry. Uh, it's important that not just that I know more than my customer, me being the professional, but it's important that I am the professional in my area. If I'm going to sell my service as a professional service and a premium service, then I have to have the knowledge, I have to have the agronomic knowledge, uh, everything from fertility to mowing, irrigation. I have to be the best at it to be the best in my niche. Now I know there's going to be better technicians out there than I am. Uh, there's no doubt about it and I'd, I'd love to hire every one of them if I could. Um, so the other part of that is building the relationship with the customer which is actually another great stress reliever. Um, the better relationship I have with the customer Typically when I call, there's less questions as to why I'm doing something. Uh, not always the case, and I do, I, don't get me wrong, I definitely want my customers to ask me questions. There's nothing worse than pulling up on a yard that has brown patch out the wazoo, and it's obvious they've had it for a month, and you show up to do the next application, and they immediately come out the door saying, what, what happened? Why do I have all this disease in my yard? When did you first start seeing it? it? I saw it four weeks ago. Two weeks after you did your last application, I saw it. I said, you have to call me on things like this. I'm on the yard seven, eight, at the most, ten times in a year. You're here 365 days out of the year. And I'm relying on you just as much to be the eyes and ears as I am. Uh, so, it's, you know, things like, like that can build stress. But having a nice, open relationship uh, also alleviates that stress so we've got podcasts we've got YouTube videos we've got uh, you know, studying your train we got building relationships with your customer base uh, I will say another important thing and I know Stanley Genetic talks a lot about uh, networking networking is huge for me and the reason being isn't just the fact of building new business, which is the number one goal of it, is referral-based business. And you know, a referral is the, the best business. Uh, but it's also having a network of people that I can talk to about the day-to-day -day struggles of being a small business owner. Um, now, granted, I, I don't own the business I work for, but I operate independently. So, well, you know, whether it's uh, data logging in front of the computer for six hours or printing uh, uh, sales flyers or uh, putting together aeration overseed letters to be mailed out tedious tedious boring office crap like that that I don't have the skill set to handle day in and day out I have that network of people I can talk to and ask how they handle it. What kind of systems do you have in place to make it more efficient? That is huge for me. Huge for me. We got networking uh, and my spouse, my wife. The stories I come to her with, stories of you know, anger or you know, being cussed out or even the time I was attacked by uh, a pit bull cane corso uh, chewed me up to pieces one time and uh, you know you come home from that and I know my wife just thinks you why do you continue to do this to yourself day in and day out and uh, so you know she understands that it's a passion and it's something I love and when I get overwhelmed with things she's a great person to talk to um, so, you know, there's lots of different ways to handle the stress. Uh, I know I've recently changed my diet to eliminate sugar, uh, so no fruits or uh, processed foods. I stay away from carbohydrates as much as possible. Uh, I've read different studies on how 
this may or may not affect mood uh, and I figured what the hell would the uh, worst case scenario I lose weight best case scenario I lose weight and I eliminate some stress in my life and six weeks into it now I'm down 25 pounds which is great you know here's here's one thing that drives me crazy I'm out here walking anywhere from 8 to 12 on really bad days 15 miles in a day but I can't lose a pound to save my life ever since I've been married and especially since my son was born uh, I cannot lose weight to save my life so I will take any any extra poundage coming off me you know due to a restricted diet that I can get so anyway those are my tips for handling stress and uh, staying motivated because I will tell you there's nothing that gets me going like when I get a phone call to come and take a look at a yard that right there sends me through the roof excited uh, and then there's nothing that can kill that faster than having a customer call and tell you you did something wrong and, and you know half the time yeah I did do something wrong or I missed the weed or I saw the onset of a problem and uh, I thought it would be okay I thought it would correct itself and it didn't correct itself you know you're dealing with the laws of nature here which means there's no certainty in it uh, you know you can't predict cancer to an extent you can't predict uh, lots of diseases and ailments you can take the necessary steps to prevent things to an extent but it's not always an insurance policy it was never an insurance policy uh, so anyway those are my tips and tricks on how I handle the the storm how I try and stay motivated through the summer months um, I'd like to know what you do what do you do to stay motivated in summer months what do you do uh, to, to keep that sales drive going in, in your mind seems like when May gets here up, up till the 4th of July I'm I'm all pistons go but then once the 4th of July gets here it's I'm trying to slow down the train how do you keep your train going year-round let me know in the comments be sure to like the videos comment subscribe please I'd love to hear from you guys thank you take care